Hi, I'm Claire, and I'm going to talk you through how to use the Durston seven piece ring bender. So if we have a look at the tool, you can see you've got seven different posts and dies that correspond with each other. We've also got this section here, which is a geared section, which I'll show you how to set up. So this tool is really great for working with lots and lots of different sorts of, of wire. You can work with wire and sheet up to a maximum of about 20 millimeters. But you can see here, so we've got some, some rings that are created with sheet, some decorative wire, and some round and some D-shaped wire. The different uh, posts and dies, what that will allow you to do is make different diameters, different size diameters, and also you can work with a square and a rhombus die that will give you those lovely angles like in the pendant there. You'll also get with the, uh, the seven piece ring bender, you'll get the vise. So what you actually need to do with the vise is, is have security when you're working with the ring bender and make sure that, although it's a geared system, so you don't need to put very much force behind it, you want to make sure that it's secure onto the desk. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this small one while I'm demonstrating. So when you actually get the, uh, the ring, ring bender, what it's going to come with, it's going to come with a handle, uh, some nuts and bolts and an Allen key. And there's a couple of different ways that you can, you can use this and you can set it up on your bench. You can actually, you could secure all of it to the bench itself. So you've got the long screws that will go, and you can go directly into the base here and then into your bench if you wanted to. Or if you wanted to sort of like a little bit more flexibility, you can use this section here. So I'm gonna take that out. I'm gonna work with the shorter screws. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just gonna make sure that that is on here. And I'll take the shorter screws and we'll line this up. So I'm going to pop this in and then we'll secure this to the base here. So what we're going to do, we're going to secure this section onto the part there and then we can pop that into the vise here. Just make sure that's secure. Okay, so it's looking like that. So I'm going to pop this into the vise. Let's just get that so that, that is tightened in here. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that that is nice and secure for when we start to shape our rings. Okay, so I'm going to pop that back down. We'll get that so it's secured to the bench. Okay. So what we're looking for on here, I'm just going to move the other bits out of the way because we don't need those. And we've also got the handle here. So you can see here, it's a really, really simple handle to use. And we're going to screw this into the unit here. And this is a geared handle. It's a geared unit here. So that means we don't need lots of force here. It's really lovely and easy to use. So now what we've got is we've got a space here and a space here. And this is where we're going to work with the dies and the posts. And if you have a look on the base, you can see the different dies here. So what you've actually got, you've got some hardened steel dies on the cast iron base. And also got some precision machined Delrin dies here as well. And these are going to be really, really good because they're not going to mark your metal at all, the wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the posts. So I'm going to take this one here. And that's going to slot into this section there. So that's gone in here. So, now, so to make a ring, I'm actually going to take some of my decorative wire here. And what's always good, if you can, is, is to anneal it first, which means so to soften it. So if you introduce heat to it, get it nice and warm and then let it cool down. And that just means that the metal's softer when you want to get those nice curves. So what I'm actually going to do now is I've got the, the die and the post in, and I'm going to work with the Delrin one, so we're not going to have any marks at all. 
If you do get marks on your, on your wire, that's absolutely fine. You can just go over afterwards and, and tidy up a little bit. So what we want to look at here is if you have a look at the positioning of the, uh, of the wire, which has gone in the middle here, what we want to make sure is that we start the curve, but you can see I've got a little bit of wire that's coming out here. What we don't want is, I don't want to start it so that it's in the middle of this section here. I can go back and get the curve afterwards. So I'm going to hold here and support the wire. And I'm actually going to use, so I've got the, the handle now, I'm going to start to push towards, so I'm pushing one way and we can hopefully start to see that wire bend. And I go back the other way, so you can see that geared lever. And now I'm going to move it back so that it now has gone into the middle and we can get a nice curve on that straight part. Really push against. There. And I start to work my way around now. And let's keep going and you can see this nice curve that I'm getting. So I'm working all the way around, turning. And if it moves slightly like mine is, just go back into your, into your vise and secure it. The other thing you can do is you can also use it as when it's when you've got the force on with the handle, if you needed to, and just pull and wrap around because they are lovely, really smooth, well-finished posts. So you can see what that's gonna give you, a really nice curve now. And that, what that means is that will really, really help when you want to do something like soldering and you want a really neat, neat join because we've gone all the way around. So if I just pop it back in, I can keep going until we've gone all the way around and pull and I know exactly what size that is and that will then allow me that I've got a really nice neat join because I can cut here and we can see that I've got a really really neat ring and that will that really works really really well with decorative wire and with your sheet um, sheet wire and with your rounded or your d-shaped wire so you can see as well so if we swap this over now we take this out and you might find that when you get yours home there might be it might be slightly oily so you can just you can wipe that off so it's not a problem with that so if we wanted to uh, work with uh, let's let's do an angle so I'm going to take the the post that's going to give me that that 90 degrees and this time I'll take the die there so again I'm going to line this up so let's just check that that's in the right place. You can see I just need to move that the post slightly. And again, I just want to make sure that it's coming, that wire is coming slightly past that line. And I'm going to push, push across. And I push the other way. And that's going to give me that lovely, neat, sharp angle like that. And that's going to be really useful if you're going around cabochons, different things with, you know, any square shaped gemstones like that. Something with a nice angle and you can see how neat that is. So that essentially is how you use your, your Durston seven piece ring bender. So you can see there's lots and lots of different options that you can use it for. It um, sits neatly on your, uh, on your lovely workbench as well. And it works very, very well if you've got any dexterity problems because you can see with that geared lever, there is hardly any effort to push against. So you can see how easy that is. So it works very, very well. It's going to give you lovely, neat results. So that's your seven piece ring bender from Durston. <laughs>